Hello, this is Janet Michael. In addition to hosting The Valley today each weekday at noon on the River 95.3, I also produce podcasts, and I'm excited to introduce you to a new podcast series in partnership with Lord Fairfax Community College. Having provided higher education and career training for the past half century, LFCC is tightly interwoven into the fabric of the Northern Shenandoah Valley and Piedmont regions. Join me every week for conversations with current and former students to hear their funny and inspiring stories as we learn about their journey to higher education, the role that LFCC has played, where they are now, and where they plan to go. We'll also talk to current and former professors about their experiences and best memories of LFCC over the past 50 years. Get every single episode as they're released on our website at theriver953.com under the podcast tab, or you can subscribe for free in Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, on Spotify, Amazon Music, wherever you listen to podcasts. Just search for LFCC Stories. Hello and welcome to the Valley Today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Wednesday as you are listening to the show today. It is the Valley Business Today and it is Winchester, Frederick and Clark County's turn at the mic for the Valley Business Today. So we are on the Zoom screen with the top of Virginia Regional Chamber. Cynthia Schneider is their CEO and John Fox is joining her today. He is their new 2021 Chairman of the Board. Thank you guys for meeting up with me on the Zoom screen today. I appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having us. So, John, I understand that you have just taken office as the new chairman of the board. What exactly does that mean? (laughs) Well, you know, going through everything and progressing through the other uh, leadership positions that we have eventually leads to the uh, chair position. Um, And really, it is going to be kind of the, the chair and the executive committee work very closely with Cynthia and the staff to make sure that the uh, top of Virginia Regional Chamber is accomplishing the goals that we have set out, whatever Cynthia is trying to accomplish also, um, and do the good work for the na- the neighborhood and around here, all in part of the uh, top of Virginia Regional Chamber. I think sometimes people misunderstand that the chamber is run very much like a business. You have a board of directors, you have an executive committee, you guys have strategic sessions, you do marketing plans and business plans, things like that. Were you familiar with how all of that worked with the chamber because you had been involved at a board level for so long? Yeah, yeah. You start to learn how the uh, organization works. Um, and they have a fantastic, they do a great job. Cynthia and all of her staff are just really wonderful at what they're doing. So you have a good idea of what's happening with uh, marketing, with getting the businesses together. Um, so as you work your way through it, you really try to learn the organization. In our, in our conversation last month, Cynthia and I were doing kind of a look back at 2020, and she was talking about all of the changes and the pivots that the chamber had to make because of the pandemic. And I remember specifically at the end, she was gushing about how grateful she was for such an involved board and a board who understands what has to happen in order to move forward. What kinds of things were you guys thinking about and looking at from the board perspective? I mean, we weren't, unlike anyone else, we were very much impacted by what was going on. So all of our meetings had to go virtual as well. Uh, A lot of the things that were the in-person events that the chamber would plan have gone virtually. Some things had been able to be held hybrid, um, but we had to make the exact same changes that everyone else had to make around the world. Cynthia, what, has, what does it do for you when the board changes? Because it changes every year, but you're lucky enough that, like John said, some of your board members are moving up through the ranks. So there is some consistency, even though new people come on every year or every couple of years. There is, and that's um, a tribute to the organizational setup. Our um, board members serve a minimum of three years per term, and they can do up to two terms. Um, if they move into the executive committee, they can stay on longer. Those, those two terms are, they aren't limited to two terms once they've moved to the executive committee. So for example, Tracy Vasica, who is just leaving our board as the chair, has been involved for, I think, almost 10 years. Moved through her two terms, then came through from vice chair to chair elect to the, board, to the chair. And then the chairman also serves one more year after leaving that office as the immediate past chair. So they continue to bring that kind of perspective and wisdom about the organization 
helping that transition. So we have really good transition time. Um, as I mentioned, with a, with a vice chair, chair elected chair, it gives that chairman of the board um, you know, three years particularly focused and in the executive committee itself learning how we function, what their role will entail. So they're fully prepared walking in day one. And John, I know Tracy uh, from her days at TV3. So she and I go quite a ways back. It probably is really helpful to you as the incoming chair to know you've got the past chair to lean on and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or just run some ideas by her. We, we've had some fantastic people that acted as board chair during my entire time that have been here. So it's Tracy and a long list of people um, in front of her have really set the bar very high. Dr. John Lamana was prior to Tracy. We had Bill North prior to that. We had Mitch Moore prior to this. So it is just a laundry list of people who are really movers and shakers and really sharp people that are around here that you can lean on and ask questions. You know, another um, thing that really helps with that consistency, Janet, is our most of our or all of our board members serve in some way, either on a committee, uh, at the board level or engagement perhaps by overseeing one of our events, being part of a committee for an event. So they're all engaged at some level um, and get to see the, how we function. And so those committee chairs also help bring a real good sense of continuity to the work that we're doing. John, how much of what the chamber has always done or has done in the last several years is just a regular norm to move forward? And how much are going to be new things that you bring to the table because you do have a different perspective and think, hey, maybe we should try this? Are, are there going to be some of both? There, there certainly will be. Uh, the chair can certainly, if they have a direction they like to take things in, we can present our thoughts and ideas. We do have a strategic plan that we uh, worked on, and our uh, most current one that we're work on, working on is our uh, 2019, 20, and 21. Well, you know, we'll be discussing and doing another strategic planning coming up on Wednesday morning. However, we weren't going to throw the one that we have out right now and just throw it out the window because we still have goals. Even things have changed, and with last year just being so weird, this year continuing to, to be in that way, um, we just have to adapt. It, whatever it is, we're going to have to meet. And if we come up with different ideas or do we have to adjust our goals, we would rather do that. But we don't have to make any kind of drastic changes to, to just throw the whole thing out the window. It is just, uh, like you said, pivot and let's make adjustments so that everything can move smoothly uh, going forward. Cynthia, I've talked to a lot of small businesses over the last year, a lot of nonprofits over the last year, and kind of the underlying theme that I've heard is they've put a lot of things that they had planned to do in 2020 just over to the side. Then they created all of these new things in 2020 because of what 2020 was. And now their concern is 2021 being able to do the things they had hoped to do and still keep the things that they learned to do. How much of that are you going to lean on the board to help you figure out and navigate as we go into a new year? You know, I think we have a plan already in place for 2021 where we learned enough from 2020 about how to pivot quickly as needed, that we're going into 2021 with fresh eyes. Uh, we expect our first quarter to remain virtual, uh, but by end of March, we're actually hoping for our first in-person major event. Um, but Unfortunately, we know that if that can't take place for some last minute crisis, once again, we'll pivot quickly back to full virtual, but we are expecting to do our greater good awards in a in-person hybrid format this year. And um, most of our other events, barring any major changes in the current uh, gathering status, we think we'll be able to start meeting again, uh, at least for those people who want to. Um, by April, and we'll continue to keep both formats available for our members. Some of our events will probably stay virtual because as you noted in our earlier conversation, the lack of travel time by meeting virtually is very helpful for many of our members to be able to access the programs and services that we provide right from their office um, and not spend those extra hours in travel. 
I know that from talking to your counterpart in Front Royal, Nikki has found kind of the same thing, that there are some things that she started in 2020 that are all virtual that are going to continue even into 2021 and then maybe do something like she does a coffee break conversation every Friday morning where people can just come together and talk about what's going on. And that's going to continue through 2021, but she's going to have an in-person once a quarter so we can still get together and see each other face to face. So those are all of the different options. I would guess that you get to explore and figure out what's going to work best for your chamber. Yes. You know, and I, John and I haven't talked about this yet, but I can foresee per, very potentially our board meetings being like that, like maybe only meeting quarterly in person and some of the others being virtual because it's a lot of driving time for these, these professionals um, to, to get to those meetings. And uh, we have, we've had all of our board meetings virtually this past year and they've been successful and fact, we're doing um, an orientation and strategic planning session, as John mentioned, this Wednesday morning, and that's going to be virtual. And we're going to still be able to go in the breakout room so that they can be small group conversation and um, get to know each other personally. And we think it'll still be very effective. Well, let's take a quick break. When we come back, John, I know that you are a businessman. You were the owner of Greenwood Deli and Grocery or Grocery and Deli for quite some time. I want to talk a little bit about how your business experience kind of helps you be able to propel the chamber forward. Can we do that in the next segment? Absolutely. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to continue our conversation for the Valley Business today. We have pre-recorded our conversation on the Zoom screen with Cynthia Schneider. She is the CEO at the Top of Virginia Regional Chamber. Joining her is their new chairman of the board, John Fox. We're going to talk more with both of them in just a couple of minutes. Got a financial decision to make or a goal to reach, but you don't know where to start? You've come to the right place. Introducing Quick Money Chats with the Northern Shenandoah Valley Financial Education Program. Visit tinyurl.com backslash quickmoneychat to schedule a virtual chat with a staff member or trained volunteer. We won't tell you what to do, but we will give you the tools you need to choose wisely. And because Virginia Cooperative Extension is part of Virginia Tech and Virginia State, your land-grant universities, you can be sure that our information is credible and trustworthy. And you'll know that we aren't trying to sell you something. Maybe you want to improve your credit score or reduce your banking overdraft fees or even figure out if you can afford to buy that car. Sorting through tons of information on the internet can be overwhelming and sometimes it can be hard to know who to trust. Schedule a quick money chat and get the information you need to take action. Go to tinyurl.com backslash quick money chat and get financial education personalized for you. Welcome back to the Valley today. I am your host, Janet Michael. Happy Wednesday as you are listening to the show today. It is the Valley Business Today with the Top of Virginia Regional Chamber. So on the Zoom screen, we are chatting with Cynthia Schneider. She is the CEO at the Chamber. John Fox is their incoming uh, current now chairman of the board. John, when we went to break, we were talking about just how the board works, the importance of the executive committee and the transition process. But you're not coming into this with no business background yourself because you've been a a successful businessman for quite some time in our community. Uh, My my wife and I were longtime owners of Greenwood Grocery and Deli. We had the store for just short of 16 years, and we sold it uh, last year, the end of 2020, uh, end of 2020. to just free up some time for ourselves. We did it for a long time and it was time to uh, let some new owners come in and take that over. So yeah, we've we've been involved with business for a very long time and been involved with community around here too. So we've known a lot of people and done, uh, I think that I've been doing things with Chamber now for pretty close to, I don't know, eight or nine years in in some capacity in, in working with that. So it's just a good thing to be involved with, especially when you have a business in town to make those connections in the community. And Cynthia, we touched on this briefly in the first segment too, about having the board support, having board members that also in their own businesses had to make some of the same pivots that the chamber had to make had to have been a huge benefit for you because you didn't have to re-explain or re-educate them on why what you were doing was necessary. Oh, for sure. And you know, the board is just such a source of wealth of wisdom. They really help to give me guidance 
um, and, and bring their industry perspective. This is why our board is comprised of people from many different industries. We try to make sure that there's a good balance there of small business, large business, nonprofit, uh, different sectors so that the board can bring a broad understanding of what it is businesses need in our community. John, Cynthia mentioned earlier that all of the board members also serve on different committees. What committees have you served on from the chamber? Uh, I originally started out um, volunteering on the Hobnob in the Valley uh, committee, and that was before I was on a, a board or anything else. So that was just, I came and said, I'd like to volunteer for something that came open. So I did that and uh, did that for a number of years. I think probably six or so years chaired that eventually moved into chairing Hobnob in the Valley. Um, for I think that was your years. first appearance on the Valley today was when you came talking about Hobnob. Yeah, that's been a few years now, and sure, he's been been there with you a couple times. Um, we also have the Workforce Development Committee. I'm on that one as well. Uh, we have our Marketing Committee that is there. We also have our Public Policy Committee. So we definitely like to have our board engaged. Um, it's not a huge time commitment. I know a lot of people will worry about, well, would this take a lot? I mean, really, it's just probably a, a few hours a month is, is really all that's going to be required. Um, but that way we know people are in the right places to try to help out and become active involved with the organization. And Cynthia, you mentioned that your board meetings had moved to, to being done on Zoom. I would imagine a lot of these committee meetings are done the same way, which probably does help with that time factor. It has, they are all virtual at this time and very effective still. So I expect to see that continue quite a bit with many of the committees and at least on a you know regular, regular basis, uh, virtual, sometimes been together. Now, if somebody is listening and John just rattled off several of the different committees and they thought, oh, wait, I didn't know that was a committee. I'd like to be on that. How do they start that process? Do they reach out to you? Are the committees listed on your website? They are. They're on our website um, under, I think it's under programs. Um, and let me, I'll have to look it up for exactly where it is while we're talking. But yeah, you can just nick the... Um, chairman of the committee is listed and you can reach out to them or myself and request uh, to get involved. And that's for any of our, any event, uh, any program or our board or board committees. And our board committees are not comprised of just the board. They're chaired by a board member, but we have other members that help bring their expertise to that field of interest. So and it's John a great did, way to move into being on the board to get started at the committee level like John did in an event and then moved to a committee and then moved on to the board. Yeah, it really is a good way to kind of get your feet wet and figure out where you would belong in the greater scheme of things. So, John, do you have any specific goals as the new chairman, things that you would like to see implement? Do you want committees to be stronger? Do you want membership to grow? Do you have things like that that you've kind of scribbled out for yourself as some of your goals? Well, it's some of those, like you just mentioned, are just kind of generic goals that we would always have. The, the chamber is a membership-driven organization, and it's extremely important for us to make sure that we get members and then retain our members, which we're really good at keeping those there. Um, so I, I will say if you are a business that's out there and it doesn't matter, small business, large business, support the chamber because the chamber is here supporting you. Um, whether you are a member or not, you are reaping the benefits of the, the work that we're doing. So become a part of what we have going on, try to volunteer and become involved in the organization. But things that I want to do I am particularly interested in making sure that during our recovery from COVID, that the small businesses are able to get the information um, that they need to be able to really weather the storm, those that are, that are making it through, because it is incredibly difficult for everybody, but small businesses really are feeling it. They don't have the large HR departments and everything else. So when you have somebody who's got a, a mom and pop or a small business, um, they are the HR department. They are the payroll and finance and uh, billing and collecting, and that's what the person does. So um, we want to make sure that they are getting all of the information that we can uh, distribute out, be it uh, from the Commonwealth or federal or what the other, maybe uh, the Commonwealth or, or Virginia chamber is doing, and pass that information along to our members. 
And it's important too, because I think sometimes people think, and, and I was having this conversation earlier today when I recorded the show with Justin that aired yesterday, that people, well, it's 2021, all of that should be over and this is a new year and it you don't just flip a switch. It's going to be just as difficult to come out of this as it was in the early days when we were going into it. I totally agree. I, I, I still think that we're a good ways off. So just, you know, kind of tempering our expectations to make sure that we understand where we're going to go. I, I really feel hopefully by early fall or so things start getting back to normal somewhat. Um, but people have to make it that far with their businesses. So they can't just simply hold on to hoping because if they've got to keep the doors open and paying things, they, they've got to make sure that they're able to make those choices right now. And again, that goes back to another upside to you having run a small business. You get that there are a whole lot more things going on in the background than a lot of just your customers coming in the door would know from coming in the door. Oh, it, it taught me a lot. Um, and yeah, it's, it, it's a pretty big umbrella that uh, you've got going on there. Cynthia, you mentioned in the first segment too about when we were talking about how you've had to pivot some of your events and some of the meetings and things like that. I know that uh, you said the Greater Good Awards are hopefully, fingers crossed, going to take place in person in late March. I understand Danita is going to come talk to me about that. Right. We'll February talk to her next month about that. Mm -hmm. and, Sneak preview ideas that it's going to be at the Alamo Draft House on Thursday, March 18th. That's our hope. So. And we were talking during the break about the fact that usually you get have your membership meeting tied into those Greater Good Awards. And I know that as people are listening to the show now on Wednesday, you know, shortly after noon, the State of the Chamber is going on at 1230. So or obviously they can't listen to both of us. And I'm not going to tell them to listen to you instead of me. Sorry. I love you and everything, but that's not going to happen. But tell me about what they can expect to hear if they want to listen to that live and listen to me later. How about that? Or vice versa, we will have a recording and we'll put that up for people who couldn't join us uh, in person virtually, but they'll uh, be introduced to our board. There'll be a vote, the official vote for the installation of our officers and our new board members. We have three new board members coming on and three who are retiring. We uh, will then have literally the passing of the gavel from our past chair, Tracy Vasica, to John Fox. Uh, we will introduce all of our board members to the membership, and then we'll um, do a little overview, a uh, kind of state of the chamber, what, what happened in 2020 and what our vision and expectations are for 2021. Do you have your speech all put together, John? Is it all written out? Are you going to have a teleprompter? How's all that going to work? <laughs> you know, I'll probably just work off of some bullet points also that, although that's not a bad idea, really, I should probably do that. <laughs> Teleprompters aren't for everyone, I will right? say. <laughs> We, and we're also going to focus on the, some of our legacy members. One of the things that we really want to begin highlighting um, because of the longevity of so many of our members who have been so supportive of the chamber for some as many as 75 years, we really this year want to do a better job of um, highlighting those longstanding members. So we're going to um, be highlighting a few of those and kind of getting everybody's whistle wet to uh, start learning more about our longstanding members uh, along with our new members. I've been working on a podcast series with Lord Fairfax Community College because they're celebrating their 50th year this year. And it's been really cool for me to see that look back in history of who used to be where and when and what happened under the various leaderships from the deans and the presidents of the college. Mm -hmm. So I really like the idea that you're calling out some of the people that have been involved for so long because they're a wealth of knowledge. They are. So if somebody wants to participate in that state of the chamber, again, we're recording this on a Monday afternoon. People are listening on Wednesday. So if they're listening to us, where can they, do you think they will be able to go to listen to the state of the chamber? It'll go up on our social media um, platforms. And so they'll be able to look there and it'll be on our YouTube channel, TBRC TV, uh, shortly after the presentation. And then for more information about joining a committee or learning about other events or getting involved in different things, where is the best first place for people to start? I think our website, regionalchamber.biz, and then in the banner that has the highlights of different things, there's a specific um, tab for committees. 
And then when that drop down comes, each committee that has uh, availability is listed and tells what that committee does, when they meet, who the chair is. And they can literally, it's just a link right there to email the chair of the committee or myself, and they can contact us to get involved. And John, I knowing you, I know that you are more than happy if a small business out there isn't a member or has let their membership lapse and they're reconsidering now, you would love to have a conversation with them to just explain to them how it worked for you and what your goals are as the new chairman. Absolutely. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You can reach out to Cynthia if you're just curious about the chamber, want to know about the, the due structure, what it is all about contact us. Uh, if you have a business, if you're part of a business, it is very beneficial for you to be involved in this. And uh, the Chamber does a lot of good things around town. Awesome. Well, thank you both for taking some time to meet me on the Zoom screen today. It has been a great conversation. Oh, thanks, thanks so for having us. I was reminded this morning of a little um, tagline we had a while back at, at the top Virginia Re Regional Chamber. We're on top of it. <laughs> I remember that tagline. I don't quite go back 75 years for the record, but I do remember Dr. Shindo. He was my first experience with the chamber. So yeah, we're not going to put a year number on that, but it's been a while. Let's just say that. <laughs> We have been having a conversation today with Cynthia Schneider. She is the CEO at the top of Virginia Regional Chamber. Joining us on the Zoom screen has been John Fox. He is their new chairman of the board. Again, regionalchamber.biz is the best place to go. If the link is available to the YouTube, by the time we have put the show up on the air, I will put it on the show notes page so you can go and watch the State of the Chamber as well. And I won't be offended. If you prefer to watch it live at 1230 on Wednesday, you can listen to me in the podcast. I have no problem with that. I'll meet you back here tomorrow. It is Traffic Safety Thursday. Lieutenant Warren Gosnell and I are going to have our usual monthly conversation. So meet me here just a few minutes after noon.